Hi, I'm Andre and I'm working as an, a product manager in Azure Pay Management team. Today, I want to demonstrate uh, Gen AI gateway capabilities in Azure Pay Management. But first, let me start with why we decided to build those capabilities in the first place. Um, we've seen a lot of customers experimenting with large language models and building intelligent applications using those. And Azure makes it very easy for you to, to get started. You just deploy Azure OpenAI endpoint, you get a key, you import an SDK of your choice, and you're good to go. But then when you decide to scale, now you have multiple applications on one hand side, you have multiple backends, OpenAI backends on the other side, and that comes with a lot of challenges. And we wanted to solve those challenges through the, with Azure Pay Management. Um, so let me start with um, Azure Pay Management Service. And that's something that you see on the screen right now. And I want to expose um, Azure OpenAI uh, deployments to my, to my team. And to do that in the Azure Pay Management, we have this nice uh, experience directly in the portal. So I can click here and I can select from uh, existing Azure OpenAI instance. Um, I can give it a name. And here I can uh, checkbox this improve SDK compatibility um, checkbox. What it does, it makes sure that um, whatever your developers um, used in the, previously, for example, Azure OpenAI SDK, LangChain, PromptFlow, they will keep working with Azure API Management Instance. And from their experience, uh, it will just uh, be the same as if they were calling uh, OpenAI directly. Now on the second tab is where we have these capabilities, uh, Gen AI capabilities that I mentioned previously. So first of all, I can manage token consumption. So let's say I have multiple teams. I don't want to spend a lot of money on tokens. So here I can set up the tokens per minute limit per each uh, subscription. And subscription is something which is used in Azure Pay Management uh, to represent uh, an API consumer. In my case, it, it's going to be um, um, a development team that is using uh, Azure OpenAI. What I can also do is I can also enable track token usage. What it does, it, it's, it sends the um, prompt completion and total uh, use tokens to application insights that was already onboarded to, uh, to Azure Pay Management. And I also want to understand the breakdown between different teams. So I will add this uh, dimension. And these dimensions, they allow me to basically split uh, the usage later on in the, um, the application insights to understand how many tokens were consumed by a specific um, subscription ID, location, IP address, or something like that. Um, we also use um, managed identity authentication, which means that you no longer need to um, uh, distribute your OpenAI key to different teams, which is um, not very secure. Uh, we're authenticate. We use a managed identity to authenticate from Azure Pay Management to um, uh, to Azure OpenAI, and in that case, your developers they will use subscription keys um, from API Management instead of using uh, just one OpenAI key. Now I can go ahead and, and uh, create this API. Uh, so it, what it does, as I mentioned, it creates um, the, um, the API for this OpenAI um, uh, endpoint that we, um, that we selected, and it also creates the backend uh, for me to use. So here I configured everything uh, through the UI, and now I can go to my VS Code where, our, where I already um, imported the, um, the URL um, configured to the URL and configured the um, API management key. And now here, just to test that um, the token limit works, I will send um, a couple of requests uh, to this endpoint uh, with a, just a simple uh, sample prompt uh, to tell me a story about API management in 100 words. Um, and here is expected. Uh, at some point, we re started receiving 429, which means that our requests are foddled. And just to visualize it, here you can see that uh, we sent four requests successfully. And then once we reached this 600 TPM that we set up previously, we started to get uh, 429. Now, um, OK, now my team can use this, uh, this OpenAI uh, endpoint. But what if I want to load balance across multiple endpoints? Uh, it is pretty uh, typical uh, for, uh, for you to purchase what is called provision throughput units with, OpenAI, uh, with Azure OpenAI. And you can think of it provision throughput units or PTUs as a kind of reserve capacity for your applications. Typically, you, um, you deploy something like that uh, for production use cases. But then um, you also want to have some sort of failover mechanism. You want to have a pay-as-you-go instance as a kind of failover mechanism. Um, so you want to uh, kind of exhaust PTUs first and then fall back to pay-as-you-go endpoint. 
To do that, we have a load balancer capabilities in, uh, in Azure Pay Management. So here I have a BISO file where I uh, configure two backends um, with the circuit breaker capability. And whenever I receive 429 from one of the backends, I will basically fail over to, uh, to the lower priority uh, backend. So this is something that I already configured in API Management. Now what I can do is I can send um, multiple requests. And what we should see here is that my request comes goes to Canada East first, which is my PTU endpoint. And then once it is exhausted, we fail over to East US, which is my pay-as-you-go endpoint. And because Circuit Breaker um, configuration API management relies on the retry after header that we received when we received 429, we know when Canada East will be uh, up again. And once this period um, is over, we can uh, then send requests to Canada East again. And then and again, if when it's exhausted, we are failing over to, um, to East US. Now, when I was importing the, um, um, the, um, the LLM demo API, I also configured uh, application insights integration. And um, I was sending this token usage to my application insights instance. Um, so here is um, the application insights uh, instance. Um, we can go to metrics. We can select the namespace that I, uh, I configured. And here under the metric, we have completion tokens, prompt tokens, and total tokens metric. So what we're interested in, we're interested in some. And you can see here, I did a couple of uh, tests uh, before, before recording the demo. So we see that we consumed a little more than 800 tokens here. And we also consumed um, almost 2,000, or actually a little bit more uh, than 2,000 here. What was also important is that now we can apply splitting by subscription ID. And now we can see that we have two different applications. And they consumed, one consumed uh, one and a half uh, K and another one consumed a little bit more than that. So we, that allows me to do cross charges later on and, and in general understand the token consumption for, uh, for my different teams. Um, now, since I understand how many tokens were consumed by each team, now I want to kind of lower that number. And I can do that with um, semantic caching uh, capability in Azure Pay Management. So here I have the API where I pre-configured um, Azure OpenAI semantic caching policy. So what it does is that it allows you to cache semantically similar prompts, which means that uh, prompts which are similar in meaning, for example, uh, hi and hello, um, we will cache completion for that prompt and then we'll return it from cache, which will lower uh, the token consumption for your, for your API. Um, so here I have the Python notebook where I'm sending, I'm asking what time is it in a different formats. And when I run this, I should see that the first request uh, took some time and then all of the following requests, they were much faster. To demonstrate this, let me also visualize that. And yeah, as, as expected, first request uh, was much longer than, uh, than the following requests, which not only improves performance, but also improves uh, kind of your token consumption or kind of lowers your token consumption um, uh, in the first place. All right. So, um, if, uh, OpenAI is nice, Azure OpenAI is nice, uh, but my team, they started experimenting with other models. For example, they heard that um, there's a Phi 3 model, which is built by Microsoft, and they want to use that one as well. Um, so what I have here is in AI Studio, I deployed a Phi 3 model um, through the catalog. And here, uh, this is kind of a new capability with, from AI Studio. We have this inference API. And recently, we announced that Azure Pay Management now also supports this inference API. So I imported this API um, to Azure Pay Management. And here, um, I configured the LLM token limit policy uh, for, this, uh, for this API. And this LLM token limit policy works uh, the same way as the policy that I showed uh, to you previously. Uh, so it has the uh, counter key, which is going to be a subscription key in my case, and it also has tokens per minute. Uh, which is 100 uh, here just for the demo purposes. And now what I can do is I can um, test this policy, test this API. So to do that, I can go to a test tab. I can create a, a response for a given chat conversation. So let me paste um, an API version here and the test prompt that we used previously just to tell the story about API. So now when I click send, 
after a while, we will see that um, this request was actually served by Pi3 model. And if I send another request, um, as expected, we, get, we got throttled because uh, the limit was very, very low uh, just for the, for the demo purposes. Um, so yeah, that's that's everything that I wanted to show you. Um, this is a generic gateway capabilities and Azure API management. We have a lot of resources uh, in the documentation page of APIM. Uh, so I can't wait to see what you've built with API management and uh, and LLMs. Thank you.